Are you ever getting like harassed? In what way? Just harassed. Like, like people are being mean to you, saying fucked up shit to you. Whether it's their haters, whether uh-huh. if it's their homophobes. In person or online? We all know online. We, in, in person. Oh, no, never. Never. Really, huh? Never. The old days, though, and we always talk about this, when I used to say crazy shit to people all the time, I would just walk down the street like on Sunset, and people out of their cars would be like, you fucking homo, you fucking freak. Like People would be so vicious and bizarre. And now that never happens, honestly. It was a different world. It, there was no guys wearing makeup at the time. It was just such a different world of like, I don't know. It was vicious. Well, and I want to talk about this because yeah. it is fascinating. Again, you you were like the first of many things. And in that regard, yeah. I I don't think many people were doing what you were doing back then. At all. Did it affect your identity? And, and was it damaging to your sense of self constantly being harassed because you wore makeup? Because you like to dress and wear your yeah, hair a certain I way? I think I had such an armor on and I was always like, way too much attitude vicious back instead of just ignoring people or like responding with love i was vicious because i was attacked all the time and then you go online and everyone not everyone but you have a a fan base and this is like myspace right so i've been online on social media for 20 years that's absurd isn't that nuts i was the first person with internet in my on my street in orange county 56k dial up which no one knows what that means anymore (laughs) (laughs) msn (laughs) yeah so I just started so early, like, oh, wow, I can utilize the internet and make something out of myself and no one's doing it. That's when everyone was trying to buy up www.whatever.com yeah, and yeah, flip yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. The so I just started so early. So 20 years later. Yeah, but but still, <laughs> still that vicious reciprocation yeah. takes it, courage. It, yeah. it takes courage, though, because a lot of people would be afraid of the repercussions and after that, yes. if someone hurls an insult at you and you're vicious back and now you're in an altercation. You may go home and never wear makeup again or never feel comfortable, but I was like, no, I always want to be myself and just be me and stick up for that. So I just never changed. Yeah, you have a real courage. <laughs> yeah. You have a real courage and you, you did it ahead of everyone. So what do you say to people now who might be struggling with any sort of identity issues? And I think a lot of people are. Yeah, They really are. It's hard, but you really just have to always... This is a tricky question because there's no simple advice. I think everyone always wants an easy answer, but you really just have to get over the hump of caring what anyone else thinks. And there's no magic potion. I wish I could like give it out. You just have to do you always. And I don't know why people are so worried what everyone else thinks, especially with cancel culture, right? No one, no one's doing shit. Yeah. Everyone's afraid to say one wrong thing. So that's why I've always just not fucking cared. You know, so you just have to let go of that and just do you and always and stick to what you want to do. I think everyone tries to be what they what something they're not, especially in this city. Right. It's all perception. So do you think social media has made it easier or or harder for mm. people to feel good about themselves, for people to feel comfortable? I think with way their... harder. Oh, yeah. Man. For some reason, everyone compares themselves <clears throat> to what everyone else is doing, but we all have our own journey. So. We were talking about this in our last podcast. And I think I'd like to, to clarify this. I haven't quite like nailed this thesis, but okay. I think like every generation has its war, you know? Yes. And like, I think w- a war that our generation will experience is the war on overstimulation mm-hmm. and, and the actual effects of what that can do to a human brain. It can't be good. Yep. Right. Cause you can pick up your little infinity box here, open up TikTok for a laugh or go on YouTube to be inspired. And then get a text from your uh, girlfriend that she's breaking up with you. Now you're sad, but you want to be happy, so you turn on Netflix and do this. And then you look at someone commented and said you're you're fat or some shit. Yep. And and this constant chaotic whirlwind of emotions happening in our brain instantly. That all that I just said could happen in, in a minute. Yep, in two minutes. And that's how the culture has been. But with drama, with everything, it's just a crazy roller coaster. It's insane. Do you know? Do you know a, yeah. a news cycle now? I've calculated typically last like 36 hours before you are forgotten. Clean slate. What's the news cycle for today? Yeah. Isn't that nuts? Absurd. In, in a way, cancel culture has almost canceled itself. Literally. Because, because literally. if they tell a crazy story about something that someone did that wasn't even deserving of a story, mm-hmm. they'll have 10 more people to cancel in the next 24 hours yep. so no one gets canceled. Cancel culture canceled itself out. <laughs> so It's bizarre. actually fucking I know. crazy. I know. But we've been talking about this this whole thing a lot lately with the social media and, and um, people being overstimulated and also the, just this increase in <clears throat> suicide and mental illness. 
that kind of all started at the same time as the advent of cell phones and social media. And a lot of people are like, well, what about COVID and isolation and all this stuff? This stuff was already happening years Way before before, before am that. Amplified, amplified it a little it. Oh, bit more, yeah. but for the most part, it's it's a result of pulling yourself away from society and drowning yourself in this. So yes. I guess my question- so segue to, that's why I moved to Wyoming. Got it. To really, like, I've been Love online that. for so long. Yep. I wanted to be at mental peace and not be on my phone so much. Mm -hmm. So now I post and I don't read the comments. Whereas before, and I was on my phone 24 seven. I feel like I had to know it all, read everything, absorb everyone's negative, positive, everything. And it was so bad for my mental health. So now I just post and if you don't like it or you love it, amazing. You ever thought about turning the comments off? No. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. It's good at game, right? <laughs> yeah. It's good for the algorithm. Some yeah. people have done it and they've loved it, you know, but I, I could never do it, I don't think. Um, I let, let people talk and have whatever they want to say. I don't want to ever shut people out, but I don't also receive a lot of hate anymore. I think at the height of YouTube beauty, there were so many people watching and so many crazy negative right, <laughs> like right, right. things thrown my way. So I, I also feel like that partially comes when people can sense that you don't give a fuck. Yes. The moment I stopped giving a fuck and you could feel that through the screen. Yes. All of a sudden, the hate comments are few and far between. Yeah, yeah, you know, they they're yeah. still common. You know, welcome, whatever. But it's but like, way different. Like, Al, you know, like, y'all yeah. know, like, I go, you just it's, you're wasting your thumb energy. Like, save that shit. Yeah.